guys, welcome to Shannon D. T with Shannon D. That is me. Um, every week I am going to be interviewing a fellow performer that I know and love. And my mission basically is just to help my dance community in any way, shape, or form. Now, a lot of people out there maybe are curious about what it's like to be an artist, or maybe if you're a dancer yourself, you kind of want to peer into someone else's life and see what, what things they're doing to improve themselves or whatever could make an impact on you or help you in any way. So basically, this is my way of helping and basically share our experiences, the good, the bad, the funny, the not so funny. So today I have on my first lady interviewer. Um, she is most known for, you'll see her on YouTube a lot on the Be Funk videos, but she's obviously more than that. She is a classical Indian trained dancer based in Los Angeles. She also teaches now, which is awesome for people who want to learn classical Indian dance. And she's also my go-to when I want desserts and I want to have a donut and some boba. Cheyenne Chalun, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Tea with Shannon D. Tea with Shannon D. You're so welcome. How are you doing? How's it going? It's good. Um, I have my tea. I'm very excited to drink it, and it's nice and warm outside. So, no go. <laughs> <laughs> It's nice and warm, so I'm having really hot tea right now. Yeah. What are you drinking? Um, I am drinking a turmeric ginger. I put two bags in because why not? And yeah, it smells delicious. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I myself am drinking a matcha Udigan matcha. That's um, I was do a matcha because I knew you would do a matcha, but I decided to try this one. Yeah, I was like, all right, should I do try but then I was thinking no I'm gonna get too hyper and uh who knows how this is gonna go I'm just like all over the place so this is my one of my favorite bands Harney and Sons they're based in New York I absolutely love them it has matcha and gen matcha which is a green tea with toasted rice oh so you know me rice rice yeah well anyway let's um Let's get into it. I want to know all the deepest and darkest secrets of Cheyenne. Uh, <laughs> going already, but yeah, let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, you're currently teaching uh, classical. Yes. On the weekly. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So um, since quarantine started, I guess before quarantine started, I wanted to teach um, Bharatanatyam classes. So Bharatanatyam is Indian classical traditional dance. Um, super cultural more so than religious um, based and it was danced in the temples to tell stories of like our past ancestors and mythology and all that great stuff uh, not mythology but um, yeah so anyways been trained in that and I wanted to just share it because I know a lot of people that wanted to learn or showed passion to learn and would learn as much as they can just from watching um, mm -hmm. And so I just wanted to provide a resource so people could actually learn properly and understand it 100% rather than just feel like they're copying and not really knowing what they're doing. So wanted to teach live like in-person classes and then quarantine hit and I was like, I don't know what to do now. But luckily, um, this whole Zoom concept was like very brand new. And mm. yeah, I just dove into that and now I teach three times a week, um, three different levels. So anyone can join and there's no like age limit, of course, I've had classes where um, I've had like young, really young, like 10, 11 year olds join or even younger than that, like a six, seven year old join. And in the same class, I have someone who's like much older in their 60s join. Um, so it's a lot of fun. It's just nice to yeah. see people from everywhere um, that have a passion for this style that come in and, you know, just dance and learn something new. Yeah, I know. I think that's really cool what you're doing. I mean, I told you this before, um, because nobody's doing what you're doing. Um, I feel like it is 
is there a reason why nobody's really doing what you're doing in terms of offering Bharatnatyam um, on a drop-in basis? Yeah, there is. Um, I and this is from what I think, just because I came from a school of dance where I started learning when I was like two and a half, three years old. And then I continued like a nonstop. I took no breaks until I finished my Arangetram, which is like, I guess not the peak, but it's like your graduation in Bharatanatyam. Mm -hmm. And the amount of respect and value and just the whole weight, the cultural weight behind Bharatanatyam is so heavy that it's not something that you can just like pop in and take a class technically, right? Like it takes a lot of skill, a lot of years of dedication and learning if you want to get to that stage of, I want to do my Arangetram. It, it's right. a commitment, which is such a huge aspect of the dance form. Um, well, um, one second, for people who don't know what the process is like, what if, if you decide to uh, go on this classical journey, what is it like? How long does it take? What is an Arangetram? Um, what do you have to do? Uh, what is it? What is it all about? Yeah. Okay. So Arangetram is basically kind of it's it's like I said it's like a graduation, um, but it doesn't mean that you stop dancing. So um, lengthwise, in terms of how many years it takes for someone to do their Arangetram varies. Um, some people can do it within like five six years. Some people take longer. Some people take eighteen years to do it. It honestly mm. just depends on the student and how much dedication they put in if the teacher thinks they are ready if the teacher thinks the student is ready to perform this arangetram and if the student wants to do an arangetram it's not in this day and age it's not really mandatory to do it mm -hmm. um, but back in the day an arangetram was a stepping stone that you would complete that to be like okay I have all the basic training and now I can either go into like performance or mostly teaching so then you would have to do like another exam like a Bharatanatyam teaching exam, complete that which involves singing and choreographing and dancing and like teaching, basically like a full, like what a teacher would do or composer, choreographer, all that stuff put together. Do that so that you can finally get your credential to be a teacher or a guru of Bharatanatyam. So it's like, mm. that's like the first step. Arangitram is like high school graduation, I guess. Gotcha. Yeah. So age, yeah. I mean, length varies. Again, it's well, you, um, you obviously did yours at a young age. Yeah, I did mine in 2004. So I was 11. Um, and I'd been learning for almost seven, eight years at that point. Um, and so my, yeah, my teacher suggested or asked if like, you know, that's something we'd be interested in. Because it's also a huge, like, honestly, it's like the cost of a wedding. It's a big commitment. So parents obviously have to um be invest. okay with, invest in their child uh, <laughs> yeah. do you um well do you feel I mean are people cool with you teaching are they not cool with you teaching for I mean are you allowed to teach I honestly haven't had any anything any feedback on like negative feedback in terms of teaching I'm sure there is like there's always going to be someone that's gonna not be happy about it um I know like in the past where there have been other like my peers that have also decided to start teaching and like their teachers get upset because they're like well right. you're branching off or you're stealing this or you're like not giving back to the community but in my eyes I think just making sure people are learning in the best way is a win-win situation you'd rather them learn properly then do something like not incorrect and then continue promoting it in that way and then completely changing the whole image of the dance form for the worse. No, yeah, I, I totally, I mean, I definitely agree with you and I think what you're doing is uh, like I 100% support it because one, I mean, like you said, you're, you have people from all ages and from all over the world coming to take your class. And these are people who maybe they have done some classical um, dance and, you know, maybe they're just not able to. And now you're offering classes like these where, okay, I happen to be able to make it at this time. I can go and, and you know, 
and dance and have a good time with others, which is yeah. awesome that you're doing that. Which is the main thing, right? Like, because like I said, there's so much pressure that comes with going to a Bharatanatyam dance class. And first, and if for someone like, for, for example, for me, if I wasn't a full-time dancer, I stopped training under my m- main guru at, during high school. And then once I went to college, I started training with the Bharatanatyam teacher that was teaching at UCLA. So even within that itself, the styles are different. Like the style that I learned growing up versus the style I continued to learn in college were so different that it's hard for people that leave and they like leave their hometown or they move or whatever they moved on in life and they want to come back. And then it's like, okay, well, I, my, the style that I learned growing up and that I know is not the same as the teacher at my neighborhood teacher here. And right, so for people right. join their school, I'm going to have to start from scratch, like start from the basics, which is not something like, and I'm not going for that. I'm just going to continue my practice and keep myself active and remind myself of the form and for my own happiness. So it shouldn't like, there's that restriction that happens that I didn't want people to feel, right? Like mm-hmm. there are people that have learned um, for like 20 odd years or something and they're coming back after stopping and I'm not, not danced for like eight to 10 years. And this is just a space where I'm giving you choreography and I'm giving you some guidance of what I know, but it all it's doing is just reminding you of what you already know. So you can do it in your own style. I'm just giving you the framework to be like, mm-hmm. okay, your hand is gonna go here. But then they're like, oh, but actually the way we do it is this way. So I'm like, great, do that. Like it's, it's just bringing back what you already know. And it's, it's a free space where it's like, your teachers won't, they like sometimes expect you to be like, well, why aren't you still in shape? Had you been practicing all these years? Da, 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 da. It's like, no, I get it. Life happens. And I couldn't practice. I had a kid. Like there's so many moms that come with <laughs> a kid and I can't. I had a kid. Yeah. Like, I'm sorry. I can't do this with three children running around. But again, you just improve at your own pace or you're just here to like remind yourself that you are a great dancer and, you know, there's no pressure. But it's yeah. still integrity of the style. I yeah, I, mean, I think it's really great. Even for you know, for uh, say people like me who haven't trained in classical Indian, and you know, I let's say I want to know something. What are you gonna do? You're gonna go on YouTube and you're gonna just find whatever it is that you can find, and you're just gonna copy. No one's gonna correct you in any way because. You're just gonna think this is what it is, yeah. um, and even in, in in the Indian dance community, we see that happen all the time. Because, and how do you feel about that too? You know, when you see you know your fellow dancers who maybe aren't trained in classical Indian, and you're like, are are you like, oh? <laughs> and the tea comes out. And the tea. How do you, how do you feel? How do you feel, Cheyenne? <laughs> Um, and I, this again this is why you're offering these classes correct yes yes that's why I'm offering the classes just because I understand there's a passion a desire to want to utilize these dance movements um, because it fits certain songs I get it like there are certain songs where like ah something classical here would be great but I don't know something classical so I'm gonna look at something and then copy that or something someone has taught me so long ago I'm just gonna put that stick that in here even if it doesn't work sometimes, or it may work, but it just then continues to like grow with whoever's learning those classes and then they're doing the same thing, right? So over time, what would have been like this and supposed to have been this, over time evolves into like something else, metaphorically. (laughs) Picking mangoes, picking mangoes. (laughs) And... (laughs) Yeah. give me some shoulder action <laughs> oh that's my favorite part I mean it doesn't it doesn't like feeling wise it doesn't it used to upset me but it's also like I can't impose that on people right it's it's my thought it's my feeling and it's only happening because I've spent so many years training to understand this style that it's like a sense of it's like TikTok nowadays right like it's a similar concept where dancers like us that have trained for all our lives to be professional dancers we've been spending so long trying to get that validation or fame or whatever financial stability from our dance form 
Whereas people come here on TikTok and they do one dance move and then they have a million followers and they're getting paid in sponsorships. And you know, it's like, it's like that sort of. Yeah, yeah, no, I feel you, which <sighs> I, I love TikTok now. I, I you know, it's, it's always so funny because that's how I know I'm getting older when something new comes around and I'm like, it's another <laughs> thing. It's another thing. And then all of a sudden, oh, yeah, I love it. It's so good. <laughs> Let's make a TikTok. <laughs> Should we make a TikTok? Let's make a TikTok. <laughs> uh, no, I, yeah, I absolutely love TikTok. But I, I do understand what you mean. TikTok, though, I think every dancer should get on it. And especially now when we're in the midst of the pandemic, if you have time, create content, create content. Just let people know that you're around and you're, you're a creative artist and the more you post, the more people know about you. It's as simple as that. With TikTok, you can get one post can get down and it can go viral so quickly compared to places like Instagram or YouTube. Um, I always recommend, especially if you're a dancer and you have you don't you're not really doing much, go on TikTok. It's a win-win. Be- you can't lose by being on TikTok at this point. Like- yes. Be that person that that's sponsored. Yeah. You know what I mean? Why shouldn't it be you? Um, but anyway, what uh, what I also wanted to know was why Bharatanatyam for you? Um, was it your parents that decided you were going to do that or? Like, oh, like growing up or teaching right now? Growing, growing up, actually, okay. um, you know, did you always want to dance? Because I know your, your family, your, your dad is a musician. Mm-hmm. Dad is a musician. And- aunt was actually my dance teacher um my dad's sister um and I honestly don't remember because I was so young like me and my mom were talking about it recently last time I went home and she was like yeah like I don't know did I force you kids into this and I was like (laughs) probably because like what do we know as kids like we know nothing you know and it was it's like pretty um standard for a South Indian child so like if you're a girl you go into dance if you're a boy you go into music it's like your side hobby is like decided for you because you were born south indian almost not everyone does it now like not everyone sticks to it but a majority if you ask like they have some sort of musical skill or they've had some sort of i don't know tried to take classes so i don't know i know i didn't like it in the beginning <laughs> I, I always wonder that too, as, as a kid, when you're put into a classical dance form of any kind. Yeah. <clears throat> like it's because you imagine like, they're like, oh, go to dance class. And you're like, mm, okay, Bollywood, I'm going to be like this superstar, like this movie that I see. And then you're sitting here and you're like, God, I'm going to throw flowers to you. Like, that's not, it didn't. Yeah. It, I, but as a I, kid, as a kid, you don't know anything, right? Like, but now I'm like, I, I mean, over time, obviously I enjoyed it and I like wanted to go. And then I would see videos of like my aunt or my cousin dancing. And I was like, I want to be like that. And so that happened at a really young, pretty young age. And so my parents were like, okay, great. This worked. And like, let's stick through it. And um, they drove every weekend to like take me to classes, sometimes twice, sometimes during the week, like during our engagement time, it was almost like three, four times a week that we were um, maybe more um, going back and forth for classes. But the shift definitely happened, so I liked it. I got lucky. Um, but yeah, for a lot of people, they don't. Like, some people are traumatized by it. Yeah, no, I have a couple of friends who are pretty traumatized by it. But, yeah. well, okay, so your mom got you into it, and... And I was specific, actually- because if I wanted to... There was a neighborhood teacher that lived, like, down the street from our house. But I was mm-hmm. like, no, oh, I want to learn from my aunt, who lived all the way in L.A. So it was, like, traveling from O.C. to L.A. just so I could learn from my aunt. Wow, which is, I mean, that was definitely a hell of a drive, but. Then I well, them at, but yeah. Huh? I said back then I didn't know the concept of distance. I oh, just, yeah. You true. Just get places. <laughs> you, just, you just get there in two hours. Be yeah. cool. um, this is actually one of, so I, uh, I posed a question on my Instagram story, but this is also one of my questions uh, leading, uh, kind of related. So. Your parents got you into dance and now you're older and you're deciding, okay, I want to go 
to, I want to major in dance. I want to go to college for dance. Were they cool with it? Because obviously they were the ones that got you into it. Um, yes and no. <laughs> um, they, it was kind of conditional, I guess, when I first um, went to college for dance. Um, immediately as I got my acceptance like letter, um, I could kind of sense that they were like unsure about it. Um, Cause my other option was to go to a college and become like, have a, get a degree in mathematics and like, you know, pretty oh, amazing, pretty straightforward and you know, whatever, um, stable as one might say. And so I like immediately like just said it. I was like, okay, I'll do dance and then I'll do pre-med on the side. Like, all right, I want to do physical therapy. Like, that's what I'll do. And so they're like, oh, okay, like, great. Yeah, that, that seems like a good plan. Okay, this, this is okay. This is going to be okay. And then I got to college and I realized I have no business being pre-med. <laughs> and um, I kind of just did my own thing for a while. And that those four and a half years were quite rocky. Um, <laughs> quite rocky is an understatement. Um, but yeah, it was it was a lot of convincing and a lot of tears and a lot of being like, I want this. And then over some time, it was like, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm not happy because all my relationships were just um, just dying. <laughs> like the parents one was already super tension because they're like, we're paying for her to go to a college where we don't even like the degree. And she's mm. not like understanding like, like, I honestly didn't understand how to um, utilize what I was offered at that school that well. Mm. Like, I definitely don't think I was ready to go to college when I went to college. Um, but I was there and the program didn't end up being what I wanted it to be. And so I was trying to educate myself in like what I would have wanted to get out of the degree through other things that were happening on campus. So then I joined the, um, collegiate dance, like the Hindi film Bollywood dance team, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is, I think gave me more lessons of what I actually wanted to do. What, what were you looking for? I was looking for more of an outlet or an entrance or training or preparation to go commercial. Mm. Oh I, yeah, UCLA is definitely not that. No, it's not that. And I had no idea. Like um, I had no clue about anything dance program really. I didn't even know dance could have, could be a degree that someone got. Yeah, I yeah, I, I feel in you. College. And like- That's I buy the same for me. Yeah, which is like, cause it's not spoken about. It's not something, especially Asian families want their kids to get into or nobody does it in your like family or friends circle. So it's never brought up. Mm -hmm. Like it's never, it's never a topic. So um, I was just highly clueless. I had no clue. And I was like learning on my own, even though there were other people there, but it wasn't their pathway of what they wanted to do didn't match what I wanted to do. So it didn't feel like I could talk to them and get the right answers. Mm -hmm. um, even though my aunt all, she did her master's at UCLA, but again, it was seeing where she is now as a teacher and, creating like productions and shows and things like that that's that wasn't something I wanted either right all right. So, like, I, and she did her master's and I was here for undergrad and I was like it's not the same so I didn't know so that. so but, you joined the college team and then did that get something for you or um it oddly did like way later <clears throat> in the moment it honestly just ended up being kind of like being in a frat or a sorority um but for me, like once I got to, it was pretty serious for me because I knew I was at school for dance and I was taking that as an opportunity to learn and absorb all these new like Indian styles that were, um, that all these like the captains would choreograph and teach us. That's just like the type of person I am. Like I love learning other people's choreo. Mm -hmm. So I was taking it pretty seriously in terms of the dance part. And then obviously the fun that comes along with it is like whatever. Um, the partying and things um, but then when it came Party. to my captaincy time um, I took it way way seriously because I was like this is like what I'm not getting with my degree or or what I am some things that I'm learning I can apply it right now and mm -hmm. I can use this as like like getting experience you know how like on a resume they're like entry-level job you need five years experience I was like great I can start now <laughs> well, right right so um, took it super seriously and like I definitely felt like I went out of my comfort zone with choreo but also learned a lot with people, learned how to run a team, basically like a small business, 
um, uh, all just like aspects of basically running a small dance company um, with people who could care less about it. Mm-hmm. Like they, they only really cared about like the fame and the coolness that came with being on the dance team. Whereas I was like, we are a dance company. <laughs> and they're like, no, we're not, dude. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So that leads me to my next question then. If you didn't feel like you got what you needed out of the, the program at UCLA, for someone who's contemplating maybe going into dance and maybe college is kind of their their way in because they just don't have any other option like that's how it was for me too right you know I come from obviously Asian parents also and uh, you know they wanted me to be a nurse and uh, I ended up going to a college that had a nursing program and a dance program just so that I could have that excuse of like, okay, I'm going to be a nurse, mom. But in reality, I, I went in for dance. And I'm pretty sure to this day, I'm pretty sure my mom still doesn't know I graduated. Even though she went to the ceremony and then she asked, she asked, like, why? Because you know how it's different days. Yeah. Um, each graduation ceremony has, you know, you have the, uh, the science department and the English, you know, so, and then you had the arts um department one day and she was she asked like why why is it just everyone in the arts department and I I still don't think she knows that my degree is in dance anywho that is episode I know well it was more of a surprise at that point it was like surprise I'm a dance major (laughs) hey I tried I tried but we can go into that on another time um I'll interview you (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah tea time with Cheyenne um so what what kind of advice would you or if you have any advice for someone who's contemplating on on going to college for dance I mean would you say yeah you should major in dance or maybe maybe really do your research before you decide or what are, what are your thoughts on that was it worth it for you going to college for dance <sighs> You know, there are some days where I think yes, and some days I think no. It honestly really depends on the person, um, because a lot of what we can we learn, like, or what a lot of what I did in my degree was taking classes of different dance styles from renowned choreographers or trained people that have done this for years and years and years, and they're fantastic. But that's also something you can do without paying thousands and thousands of dollars right? Like they have classes, maybe not as like in some cities, they like LA, of course, is like too, I mean, it's not the best example because everything is so available mm-hmm. um, in terms of different styles and different choreographers and this and that. But um, you could totally take all those classes there and still learn, maybe learn better and learn more mm-hmm. than what, what I would have learned in doing my college degree. Because it was just a requirement. It was like, okay, you have to do one full year of this dance form or you pick two styles as your focus and you have to complete this many credits right but every class that we would go to like there's only uh, sometimes each style only had two levels beginner intermediate and then advanced and each class that if you even if we have to repeat it just to fulfill the number of credits we're learning the same things Mm -hmm. the same same movement same rhythm patterns just not this quarter but next quarter right right you don't really, yeah, great. You're getting a lot of foundation, but you're really not. Like you're just learning these moves over and over again. So I think you could definitely learn a lot more not in this degree, but there are a lot of benefits that come with the degree, like meeting so many choreographers or dancers that are in the industry, taking other courses, like how you can use dance or your art form, be it not dance, like UCLA's department was pretty wide in terms of what the arts were. Um, but you could use that for like activism or things like that. So it depends on what this person is looking for. If you're looking for something commercial, um, UCLA has changed their program. Again, UCLA is not the only school. That's just what I know, but, um, every school varies and you definitely Mm -hmm. should do research, um, on it. I like, I wish I did more research because I think had I had a better idea, I probably would have doubled with like something in business or communication or like something in that realm so 
because as dancers, we are our own business. We are our own marketing team and like all that stuff. And so just having a better idea of how to do that is part of being a dancer. That's something that should be part of the curriculum, Mm -hmm. um, which wasn't so focused on when I, when when it was my time. So that's something I do regret, but again, I just didn't know that I needed to do that that now, but then I had no clue. I was just like, Oh yeah, I'm just going to learn all these dances. And then like, I'm going to meet these choreographers and then they're going to recommend me somewhere. And they're going to be like, well, you should do this project with me. You should do that. Yeah. And yeah, and so this is this is the whole point of why I'm doing these interviews and stuff is so that we can talk about it because a lot of dancers don't know this kind of stuff. And I think it's just gonna be really useful if you're listening, it's gonna be really useful for you to really hone in on what you want, gain clarity in where you wanna be in your career first um, before you decide to take to, to say go to somewhere like a college that's going to cost you tens of thousands of dollars and then you may have to take a loan out. I highly suggest you take a look at the um, Hassan Minaj's episode. Did you watch that? Um, the Patriot Act. Go on YouTube. Oh, wow. um, YouTube uh, Patriot Act. He does a segment on colleges and that is that that's the same for for the dance program that's exactly the same so know what you want to get out of being a dancer and see if there's uh, find the quickest route because more than likely it's it it may not uh need to cost you so much money and that's the biggest that was my biggest regret with going to college was how much it costs versus how much it would have cost had i just got, done enough research to take the classes in studios it's, it was like like it's yeah. like someone said this quote to me way back way back when um because of course with like asian society and even other society like family communities and stuff too they're like the name of the college you go to means so much that's how mm-hmm. you know like oh you were smart oh you went here oh you're dumb you went there you went to like you went to this party school blah blah blah. but at the end of the day everyone's in the same pot regardless of what school you go to so same with dance like it's not necessary for you to be like oh i studied dance at so-and-so school i get it if you're doing ballet like there are like specific dance forms that, you know, are more, I don't know, they're given more credit because you go to a specific school or whatever, all that stuff, fine. Mm-hmm. But if that's not- The commercial world though the is- commercial world, it literally does not matter what college you go to. It's the skill that matters. It's, mm-hmm. or even maybe not the skill, but it's just so many other things that like, just your overall knowledge and being able to fit in and mold yourself and be able to like, make yourself work making connections yeah. which is something that you can't do you can't necessarily if you're trying to be a commercial dancer um it's going to be a lot harder for you once you come out of college because now you have to actually make connections in that in the commercial world yeah um that's so yeah true. no college is I always, the answer friends <laughs> college is not always the answer and you're starting to see more and more that college is becoming not the answer yeah like the number of classes that are online right now like I constantly see like oh free coding classes and you're like oh great in like 12 30 whatever 24 weeks I can have a full knowledge of like so many coding languages versus people that are going here and studying it from high school and they apply to college to learn and they're like I'm a CS major like da 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 now I'm gonna get a job and it's like yeah well so did they but they just did it during quarantine well yeah right well I mean speaking of quarantine what are what are what are you up to what's Cheyenne Chalem the dancer like what are you up to in terms of um aside from teaching dance how are you floating are you floating I am I am floating I am floating um aside from dance it's just a lot of um I was trying to teach myself how to code for a minute and then how's that going Oh, well, you know, I left it over there when I was <laughs> floating. <laughs> I floated off. Yeah, I went into a different stream and now I'm in a different little river. Um, but it was it was fun. It was de- it's definitely something that I want to um, get back into because I enjoyed it. Um, but then because classes started building up and it was like, you know, I was getting a good number and every week I'm like, OK, new pieces, new pieces after choreo. And like it takes a minute to find songs because um, of like oh, yeah, stuff. so that takes a while um, 
And then just like planning for the f- unknown future, whenever the hell this is going to end, which is like completely unknown, but just thinking of like projects of what more I can do with this to make it more accessible to people. So honestly, I've just, I'm floating, but still floating in dance. Okay. Yeah. Like, I, like I'll go home and when I'm home, I'm like trying not to think about it, but then, I mean, it's always, it's always there. You can't not think about it just because it's like the hustle that you can never, um, it'll never stop. You'll never get, yeah. get to a point where you're like, ah, comfortable. You're like, oh, okay, here's another curveball. Now I got to deal with that, you know? Yeah, now here's a virus. And then they were just talking about how they found another virus in China. Oh, yeah. In pigs. Yeah. It's um, like a flu type of... Yeah, yeah. And it's, and then now you we have... Um, our governor just uh, ordered uh, for certain for all the bars, I think all bars and does it is it restaurants too? Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember, but for sure bars. Yeah, but all of LA. So I mean, it really it's not looking so good for us yeah. in the dance in the in the dance gigging world, I should say. Yeah, gig world are is- different worlds. But it is making a lot of things so much more accessible, everything online. So if you're someone out there that does want to learn dance, trust me, whatever you're looking for, it is out there. <laughs> it is online and you can do it. You just have to be okay with it being in your own living room. Yeah. I, I get it. It's like cabin fever, but, um, you know, I well, dance. Private, like- private sessions too. Yeah, there is private sessions. Mm-hmm. But it's what just like think? the aspect that your house is like literally where everything happens and you can't really get a change of scene as it can get to you, but hopefully that one hour, two hours of class will take you to a different dimension. To different, different place, a different place. Yeah. yeah what, a, um, how have you been, I know we talked about this too. And, um, for people who are listening, who need help, um, do you know of any, uh, relief programs or anything that you've gotten money from? Um, <clears throat> the PPP. That was definitely something that helped. Um, And then there are a lot of grants, like artist grants that were um, out and about in the beginning um, that I was applying for, but I was also in a position where I was like, I'm not, I'm not in a grave position. Like I am okay in the moment. So Mm -hmm. I didn't want to like, um, I don't know, apply to those and take away from people that I know that are in need that are like moving home or they're homeless or they're living in their car and things like that. Right. Not that I'm assuming that I was going to get it, but still just one less person in, um, in the pile of applications. Um, and of course, unemployment. Can't complain about yeah, that. Yeah, no, unemployment's great, although this it's going to end. Yeah. I mean, hopefully... Um, the latest thing I got was um, that they're, it's going to go from until the end of this year. For sure. Yeah. Like I got this new mail and it was because I applied. Yeah. It started from March. What well, they said the duration would be from March till um, December 29th. No way. Yeah. That's amazing. I need to look into that because that would save a lot. Guys, if you haven't applied for unemployment yet, make yeah. sure you do. And the PPP that Cheyenne was talking about, it is called the Payment protection program I also applied for it myself and I got um 8,000 nice from it so and there's a way for you to there's a way for you to have that completely forgiven you just have to do your research and if you need help feel free to contact me DM me or anything like that and I can help you with that and they're also also the actors fund Mm -hmm. they have an emergency relief that you can get $1,000 for if you simply apply. So again, all of these things are just applying. And that doesn't hurt to apply. Just apply and see where it goes. You know, the, it's if I didn't apply, I would have gotten this, right? Yeah. A lot of people are just like, oh, no, I'm not going to get it. I'm not going to get it. And then you don't even apply. You to- completely took out that possibility for yourself. Yeah. There are um, some good at resources. Um for different, different amounts. Sometimes you'll have, it's like a scholarship. You'll just have to keep applying and applying, but yeah, one way or another. Yeah. Um, well, I want to get into some of the questions that we had on Instagram. 
Uh-oh. Uh, let's let's start with the uh, let's start with this are you little okay one. With people are or is it going to be anonymous yes of course no last name so okay uh this uh, first question comes from uh, well this person oh. if she's watching had three questions <laughs> <laughs> i already know who this is <laughs> <laughs> sheila hmm. wants to know Green or red enchiladas? Ooh. Oh, that's hard. I Red. Red for sure. <laughs> I like green because sometimes green is the spicier one, but red is, red it has this like, like smoky fiery, like, yeah. Oh, mm, yum. <laughs> but like lactose intolerant, so like cheeseless enchilada. Oh, okay. Gotcha. gotcha. So but, vegan, vegan, vegan red chili enchilada. Yeah, by answering that, that question, that, I hope she means she's going to make some and send it over because that'd be great. I didn't know Sheila makes enchiladas. You know, I don't know either, but she can make anything. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, her next question, and I like this question a lot. You walk into a bakery and there's a donut called Cheyenne. <laughs> what does it look like? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, it's a mini donut. <laughs> Um, because you know, and is it a cake donut or a raised donut? It's actually a cronut. Okay, that's a croissant donut, and um, because there's so many layers to me. Wow, <laughs> like two, like an onion. <laughs> um, yes, it's a cronut, and there's chocolate involved. Maybe some. Nutella filling, like oh not, too much, not too much, and hmm, I don't know something fun on the top, like like a strawberry colored sprinkles. I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. So you are a rainbow sprinkled Nutella glazed cronut, mini yeah, cronut, like a Ferrero Rocher somewhere in the middle of that, like in the hole. Wow, that's decadent. Thanks. Got it. Got it. Well, this was part of, she has one more question. This was part of my list of questions too. If you could go back in time. Um, and this is such a classic question because I feel like this question is asked in every interview I've ever seen. If you could go back in time, what would you tell your, uh, let's say, let's say 20 year old. No, let's say 15 year old self. Oh, 15 years old. What was I doing when I was 15? I can't even remember what no. I was like. Um, Were you into boys at that time? Probably. I mean, puberty had already happened, so <laughs> scientifically, yes. Um, I think I would just tell myself to not take life so seriously. I was like pretty, pretty nerd, serious kid and very like, type A. Um, yeah. I would have my fun, but it wasn't like like a normal 15-year-old kid fun. So I think I would just mm -hmm. tell myself to like be more chill. Be a 15-year-old. Yeah, huh? Be a 15-year-old. Yeah, be a 15-year-old and like not be scared or not be so worried about like judgment, which is hard because I know we all like we all have those feelings. <clears throat> but um, yeah, just like just doing because like there's no like, I don't know, you can't, you can't go back in time to be like, oh, I wish I did that. Or I wish I had spoken to this person. Or, I wish I was like more chill and made more friends and not, you know, so worried or yeah, like being okay with getting more involved with my school friends, maybe mm -hmm. and, like, you know, because I was just so into like our community stuff and dance class like that literally took over. Um, a good chunk of life so that I wouldn't really hang out with my school friends um, and like I don't know understand the American culture more I sometimes wonder if that would have helped me find myself sooner hmm. what how, how do you how do you mean um just to be able to like n make my own decisions um, or like know what my likes and dislikes are versus what I'm just being told to do um, gotcha because like from growing up and stuff, literally everything I did was because my parents told me to. 
um, they're like, oh, you're going to go and do this and you're going to go attend this. Yeah, there were times that I enjoyed it, but the only reason I enjoyed it was because I had already been doing it for so long. So that's like all I really knew. Mm-hmm. Um, like going mm-hmm. to certain events or community stuff, which now that I think about it, I'm like, oh, that was like not that fun. Like, why would I go? Like, I only went to go maybe see people or be in like a happy environment, but I can do that outside of that, you know? Right. Yeah. Um, mm. But yeah, just to like gain my own self awareness. Okay. Okay. Get out right. of the bubble. Because I also grew up in Irvine, which was a bubble on its own. Like, you don't really, I don't know, it's a bubble. Yeah. Yeah, so I yes. definitely a very, very lost 18 year old in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was I definitely was too. I did not I, I lacked um I lacked guidance. Mm-hmm. But that was because, you know, uh, if you come from a family that does not support the arts in that sense, mm-hmm. um, you're gonna lack guidance. You're you're gonna have to take initiative to find your own way, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, but it's hard. It's really hard to, especially if your parents are unwilling to hear the truth, are unwilling to accept your truth. Mm-hmm. That's very, very difficult. Well, this next question is from Shani, and we addressed it. She, her, her question is basically, how did your parents react when you told them you wanted to be a dancer? But mm-hmm. I would, since we addressed that, I would say, how are they reacting now? No. <clears throat> um, they've come they definitely have accepted it they're on they get very excited like when I have new gigs or just new shows or whatever different things that I show them they are full 100% enthusiastic to watch it um but it took time to build that because again they themselves don't know what this field means or is or how it even functions right like dad's an engineer it's pretty straightforward mom was an accountant, again, pretty straightforward. So it took them a while to understand how to um, speak or respond or reciprocate any sort of thing related to the dance Mm. field. So there was a lot of frustration of me being like, I just want you to accept this, not look at the flaws in it. Like the first, like I know for the first several years of me being like, look at this new project. And mom was like, why does it look like that? Why are you wearing that? I'm like, this isn't about what I'm wearing. Like, this is what arts is. Like, you have to look at the whole mess of it. Oh, my gosh. I totally remember. uh, I'm going to bring this up. I remember when we did our video, um, the Monica Pietro Abdaja video. And I remember when I can't, I don't know where we were, but I just remember you being scared. And and you said specifically, because I knew you were worried. And you said specifically, like, I don't know how I can post this I don't know how this is gonna look for my image and I don't know how my mom is going to react to this it, mm-hmm. and and it, and it was a scared it was scared yeah you were scared it was it was very scared because it's like there's already so much rockiness <laughs> the dance field that I had just come out with <laughs> like gotten over the hill where I was like okay I'm full-time working as a dancer and they can finally accept that like okay she has a job and they can like with pride say she's a dancer. And the next thing you know, Shan's like, let's do this video. And I was like, uh-huh. You're gonna wear a blonde wig and we're gonna do it in the park at five in the morning. <laughs> like it was, yeah, I knew because I know for I knew for sure like there was gonna be something that was gonna be of an issue. But again, it's just mom being a mom, right? Like yeah. it's whatever concepts we all have growing up that's like stuck there so yeah I that was like image wise like there is a certain it's it's definitely influenced by my parents of like the way you like present yourself in public has to be be very like like this right and that comes with all the culture where they're like don't talk about our problems in public like we don't want people to know we're not a happy family or that we have issues and I'm like dude every family has issues but it's even being like quirky was also like Mm, don't do that you know so yeah that was that was hilarious yeah and, oh and can you wear a mustache too um I I I find myself uh going feeling that way too uh that's why I make it a point to whenever I put the, there's no wrong way to to deal with this I just know for me I don't like to be seen in one one dimension in one light 
So, you know, even when I post stuff on social media, I'll always like, yeah, I'll post, you know, beautiful things. And, you know, like, I'll put some like, you know, whatever sexy, cute photo of me. But then right after I will put something just goofbally, you know, yeah. just and, Which and maybe I, I for yourself to remind yourself that you're just a human that's allowed to be on the spectrum of things like there is no rule saying you have to be this one thing which is I think what what everyone everyone's like oh I need to find my niche and I just need to do that because that's who I am but it's like no as as straight edge as you may be there's also a part of you that's completely opposite that balances it out that's Mm -hmm. the only you are this way is because Mm -hmm. you have a completely contrasting side that you may not let out in public, but it's there. <laughs> it's there. It's there, girl. It's there. Well, I mean, yeah. But yeah. Huh? Lady Di and our mustaches in um, Biatu. Monica. Oh, yeah. Best. Epic. I mean, hey. Hey, that's your dad. Isn't that your, like, your dad likes that video. Oh, he cry laughs every time. It's my favorite video, too. I look like him in that video, so. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, so funny. Oh, man. I need to, I want to, I, I should do a, a reaction, like, where I have um, the video reaction that you sent me of your parents when they were watching Malhari. I should do oh, it, yeah. like, that'd side be really funny. Side. Have a side-by-side, just to, <laughs> your mom, your mom's cry laughing. Okay, well, this question, I love this question. Ooh, okay. <clears throat> so, um, this question comes from Dustin. And uh, so we know because of the current, um, you know, because of the current climate in our country, you know, with racism and police brutality in the United States, um, we know that you've been doing the holding these family Zoom calls. Um, And so Dustin wants to know how how those family talks are going. And uh, do you have any advice for people on how to approach the subject uh, to their parents? Or I mean, what did you what are you gaining out of holding these these uh, Zoom meetings regarding specifically regarding racism and police brutality in unless it's more than that? Are you are you guys talking about anything else right now? That's that's our focus, because that is the. I mean, that's the most prominent issue that is everywhere. So we just thought we'd build on that. Um, but yeah, so these Zoom calls are just me and my like sisters or family friends that we've grown up together, um, having open discussions with our parents about what their thoughts are on racism, police brutality, um, mainly those two topics um, at hand. And it's been interesting. Um, the first... <laughs> it's it's tough because like the first calls we had as kids had planned because we are like I guess the hosts for it or we're like prompting questions and asking the parents like okay so this and this happened how did that make you feel Mm -hmm. just so we can kind of understand where they're coming from first Mm -hmm. so we can gauge what we need to do moving forward right right so um there are some parents that are like oh yeah this is wrong like this is not okay And then there's some parents who are like, I don't understand. And then they're like flip-flopping in between because we have this one completely extreme person who's just like, racism doesn't exist. There's no racism in this world. And we're like- That's crazy. I'm sorry, are are you on the same planet as us? Like, I don't understand. Like the moment this person said that, all of us kids were like, he didn't. Wait, so he, he literally said racism does not exist. Yeah, yeah word for word he said racism doesn't he said I don't think racism actually exists I think it's um the police definitely need more training but it's not because of racism (laughs) so I was like okay um okay so he tried to like (laughs) listen for a little bit but then the issue with that was that um once he said that the flip-floppers they started joining his party and and once that happens they start getting like riled up and they're like yeah no you're right you're right and this and this and they bring in like their own like random experiences or their own facts that are not really mm-hmm. facts. They're just thoughts that they've convinced themselves are facts. Mm-hmm. And then it just keeps growing into this bigger monster. So 
even though these meetings have are supposed to be just us kids listening we end up by we it's mostly me that ends up getting too fired up and then I start like fighting back with like facts like no that's not incorrect like have you seen this like blah, blah, blah. and so um it's been it's been it's been three weeks of that um I wasn't able to join the last call but the first two were definitely um it definitely gets pretty like not heated but us kids get pretty heated at the end because we're like there's so much to do um with certain people right they're mm -hmm. like every week we give them a, a, an assignment of okay watch this documentary in preparation for our next call so we can talk about your thoughts on that documentary and it's usually mm -hmm. just ones on netflix um that are in like the realm of black lives matter and they're doing it they're they're actually doing these assignments yeah, some of them are, some of them definitely are. And then it's great because after they've watched that, they get so into it that they start finding their own videos or like they'll come across random other things. And then mm -hmm. they'll start recommending videos in the next call to their friends. They're like, oh, actually, watch this. it's a great video. Like that's what happened that, that time that one uncle said racism doesn't exist. Another uncle, he like was silent the whole call. And then finally he like unmuted himself. He turned on his video and he's like, actually racism exists I think you should watch this documentary and then he like muted himself and just walked out like mic drop it was pretty amazing and he's become our new favorite uncle at this point <laughs> but it's, it's great because like that's what we wanted right we wanted to open up the conversation because we know that it's just them not being aware or them just suppressing it within themselves because they have faced they faced racism themselves moving out here is like as an Indian, right. or not as an Indian, being an Indian in India itself, you face colorism, which is not maybe to the same, I, I don't feel right saying it's the same extent of racism, but it's definitely parallel, right? Like they, they still face discrimination based off of color. So, or even like what caste you are and like- ah, uh, Sorry to interrupt you. Um, my friend sent me this thing and it's, um, I didn't know this was a term, colorism. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that was a term. That's I didn't like even know that. Being fair is better in India, you know, like mm -hmm. that's the whole lightning skin creams or even they say here, like with, with um, I've, I've heard in, in African-American and black communities, we're like, oh, you're a light skin, mm -hmm. you know, and there's like the privileges that come with being a light skin black person versus being a darker skin black person, like even within that um, or even in like Asian countries, right? They're like, oh, it's good to be super fair and like, skin cares this and this and that like I remember one girl in high school was like oh yeah we crush pearls and we eat them because it makes our skin lighter I was like you're eating pearls that doesn't seem healthy no that was the first time I heard of that and I was like that's intense okay you're that's super intense yeah and she's like it's normal I was like mm, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I like, are we are we this normal? yeah you know I um since I grew up in, I spent my childhood in the Philippines, but I was born in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky enough to understand, to know a different world outside of it. So I was, I was coming into that world and, and they were imposing all of these, you know, white is right, you know, where like the skin lining stuff all the time. And I, I never accepted it. I never accepted it. Uh, I never... I never really cared so much about it. Whereas some people, uh, you, they grow up thinking that that's normal. Yeah. Then they come to a country like this and then they see, oh, it's nice to be this color. Like it's, I don't have to wear lightning creams. Like people are complimenting me on my skin color. Um, I don't know if you've gotten that, but uh, when I oh. came back here into this, when I came back to the US, it was, like night and day you know people were just loving my skin color and it was like oh yeah this no it's great anytime, anytime coming back from india or even coming back from the beach here people yeah. are like oh my god your skin it's like olive and like glowing and then my own family's like you're too dark where why did you wear sunscreen look at your tan lines this and not family or like family and extended people whatever blah 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 but i'm like the contrast of like <laughs> Yeah, it's just, it's it's funny in one sense, but like, I know that's only because I've come to accept and be comfortable with who I am, but I know there yeah. are people that have gone to extremes and like very, very extreme, maybe like to the extent of self-harm just because, you know, people make jokes about it. It's like you're born with this, dude. Like, I can't help 
Like I Yeah, it's just so this is a heavy topic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is a very very hot very very heavy topic because this is something that you're born I was watching um or I was looking up articles and how in Belgium they even had uh people farms oh people people circuses oh people circuses because they really they really thought that Africans were not human mm-hmm I mean, they, they even um, back then they started calling them animals, right? That's where it all started. Yeah, yeah. that's that's what I mean. It's like yeah. when you don't when you don't see someone like I, I can you imagine not seeing me as a person like you would have to see me as a ferret. <laughs> Interesting choice, but sure. Uh, it just came out. It just came out. Um. Or like a puppy or something but but even so i mean our country treats dogs so much better than they treat humans sometimes. people it's yeah humans it's it's intense well let's let's yeah. not get into that um so that um that was a well, great question. thank you for asking yeah well i mean are you finding are you finding ways of ma- uh, kind of navigating through it are you what's what's the What's it, yeah. What does it feel like now with these meetings? Um, it feels good because I we're starting to understand how, who's on what side of the spectrum and like how we can, like the, the best way to get them to understand is to make it relatable and ask them what they've faced. Um, because mm-hmm. they have faced mm-hmm. stuff to their time. And so to be like, look, like you've, didn't get this job or you weren't taken seriously or you were like got a note or someone said go back to your country is racism Mm -hmm. same situation but this is their country Mm -hmm. right like Mm -hmm. so it's just making it relatable in that sense but also just um working through or making them realize and address the microaggressions that they even have um that we all have towards race we say mm-hmm. things and we don't realize that that's actually a racist comment because it's become so normalized. So just addressing that and recognizing that I think is the first step. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. And definitely the documentaries helped a lot because I know one of um, one of my sister's moms, she, was, um, she watched the 13th and she was like, oh my God. And she could not stop talking about it for like every single call. Or before, Aww. or every time we start, <laughs> like, God, can you believe? And we're like, no, but it's true. Like, yeah. it's so hard to see. Um, so, yeah. It's so, it's just, it's so. Yeah. It's so. It, there, there's so much emotion in this. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's hard to, to sit with it. Um. <clears throat> But it's great that there's, it's not great that there's a pandemic, but it's it's helping that there's a pandemic to be able to address these deep rooted issues, you know? Oh yeah. Um, well, um, I have one question for myself for you. And do you have any practical tips to practical advice for anyone who uh, wants or is contemplating on being a dancer, full-time dancer? What is your advice for them? And um just in general what would you what would you say to someone who wants to be a dancer but is in a tough position or maybe they don't have the confidence right now Mm, um oh that's a great question and there I feel like there's so many different things so many layers to that um if it's a confidence thing I totally understand um and that's just something that you're gonna have to ask yourself do you believe that, like from a third party, like you're gonna have to go on out, out of body and be like, do you see yourself fitting in the dance world? I think, do you see yourself there? Can you envision yourself there? If you do envision yourself there, that means that's something that you really want and you can definitely work towards it. Um, it's gonna be hard and you're gonna have to take, there's, it's gonna, there's gonna be a lot of confidence breaking in through the process 
but you are your own cheerleader. You're your own support system. Like, yeah, you can have family and friends to like constantly pull you up and be like, you got this, you got this. Like, I'm grateful that I have that. Um, but I didn't always have that. And at the end of the day, it's your, it's your life and it's your decision. So if, um, you're not feeling confident about yourself, it's understandable, but just know that you can build that confidence by maybe taking different classes and then, you know, training yourself in things so that you get better and better. And then that will help you build your confidence so that you can be like, you're right. I got this. I can mm-hmm. do this. Um, yeah, I think uh, the fear, the fear of doing the thing of just trying it out. Um, th- there's more fear in thinking about doing the thing rather than just doing the thing. Yeah. yeah. So um, my advice is just say yes to everything. Just go expose yourself to everything. And then then you can decide then you can make an educated choice. Yeah. Um to see where you want to go if it's something that you want to keep pursuing if it is something that you want to pursue how what what kind of dancer do you want to be uh what field do you want to be in sort of thing um i have one last question for you Cheyenne one okay. and well what um first off what are you working on now if there if, if there's any exciting stuff that you're working on that you may want to tell your peeps about and also talk to us for someone who wants to find you uh, or take your classes um what what when you're teaching how where where to go to get more information on that cool um projects wise um still teaching these classes um and hopefully they keep you know people find it um helpful and accessible because that's the main thing and I am working on um, putting up shorter videos that are more, I guess, instructional, um, foundational videos um, via TikTok, maybe. And also- Work! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, just, yeah, just like short little clips, um, just so that it's accessible. Um, that's my main thing. Um, I don't want to make it too complicated. So yeah, hopefully that's coming soon. Still in the planning processes of that, trying to navigate safely how to like film and not try to involve too many people, but also make sure that it makes sense and it's clear um, for whoever's learning um, Mm -hmm. all over the world. And yeah, and classes wise, um, I am teaching three classes, Bharatanatyam classes, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. And um, it starts from beginner on Tuesdays, intermediate on Wednesdays, and advanced on Fridays. And you can um, join any class that you want. Um, it's just 10 bucks. And you can sign up on my website. Um, if you don't know which class is best for you, you can always message me on Instagram. And I will guide you in the right way. Um, and yeah, the website info is just shyanchelan.com so that's s-h-a-y-a-n-c-h-a-l-a-n.com um there's some nice pictures i need to upload <laughs> videos <laughs> and uh, there's that. I need to sign up for classes there or also you can see other random things and clips that i post on my instagram which is just again shyan chelan um and yeah that's i think that's awesome a- yeah. Well, um, I thought this was cool. I want to do it again. Yeah, man. This was so much fun. Thanks for having me as your first guest. Heck yeah. Well, um, thanks, Cheyenne, for taking the time to um, get on this interview with me. Um, yeah, let's definitely do this again. And um, we will be here next week. Once again, I will be interviewing another fellow dancer that I look up to. And so stay tuned, guys, for a weekly live sessions. And peace out. Have a beautiful week. We love you all. Keep dancing. Stay safe. Keep applying for financial relief programs. <laughs> Bye. You need any help. Bye, guys. Ciao. Bye.